Okay, briefly, I'm going to... Yeah, I was just letting it go down through the 50 meters. I wanted to see if there was a tone associated with the light, but the only warning that we get from the radar altimeter is the light on, which is, yeah, just fine. Just fine for our purposes. Okay, so a little bit more collective to get up and over this, and I'll, yeah, I'll be right back once I, once I crest this little peak. Okay, and as we come up and over, I'm approaching the torque limit of 93%. And that's just all going to tie into, I could have made that a lot easier by reducing my speed somewhat. But, yeah, I don't really have, I mean, granted, I am at, it is very, very hot outside right now. I set it to just a typical June day, or actually a cool June day at Creech. And I am at a relatively high altitude right now, so I'm going to be really fighting to get power out of the engine plus it's a heavy aircraft speaking of heavy aircraft i was going to do the auxiliary tank i forgot all about doing that now my fuel gauge yeah has already come down i was looking for 347 liters before i engage the auxiliary tank so k2 is calling in position out there to the left yeah there's two right out there slipping into a good position on me and that's what well, there we go that's a good radio check of wingman communication on vhf now let me go ahead and engage the auxiliary tank. And what I'm expecting to happen is after about 15 minutes for this light to illuminate, telling me that the auxiliary tank has uh, drained and that I can just shut that off and then it'll just start to drain off the main tank again. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's exactly where I like it and where I want it right now. Okay, so let me go ahead and back off on the collective and level off right here. The next thing I was going to look at is the countermeasure system and start to pop off some flares. Now I, as I was coming up here, mapped a little bit of this stuff. I have a flare dispense button right here and a cover. And then I have a countermeasure panel right down here as well. Now I have the power switch with two positions, LE and VE, and a yellow light. I'm going to go, I'm not sure, it didn't really say in the manual what the difference was between these two, LE and VE. I guess I'll try to figure it out right here. Okay, then I have a left and right dispenser that I can select using this switch. And boy, it's it's always sort of the sort of a struggle in these modules. Right now I'm to make this switch go right, I'm left clicking. To make it go left, I'm right clicking. Same thing with this. To make it go down, I'm left clicking. To make it go up, I'm right clicking, which is sort of the opposite of what my understanding is of the what a standard setup in DCS is supposed to be. So, yeah, this, I mean, frankly, it drives me insane. From aircraft to aircraft, just different clicks doing different things when it comes to the direction of switches. But, yeah, this one is set up a little bit opposite of what I would expect. But I have the left dispenser selected right now, both dispensers, right dispenser, I assume the green light just means that everything is up and running and everything is ready. So let me go ahead and just pop off the player from the right side. Okay, one more switch here. I have CC and sequence, which my understanding is CC is a single player. Sequence is they're just going to dispense as long as I hold the button. Let me go ahead and uh, depress the button, which I have mapped to my HOTAS. Okay, so that's one player. And I was holding the button also, so that's com confirmation that just says one player. Okay, let me depress and hold. Okay, and there we go. Multiple players out the right side. Let me try that again on the, just the left side. And okay, I'm, yeah, two's clear. Okay, multiple players. Depress and hold. Single flare. Awesome, okay. And then both sides, and I'll just do a single flare. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, now, VE. Let me see if this still works. VE, let me go just to the right side. And, okay, one flare. Let me go for sequence. Oh, okay, wow, okay. That's what that does. Okay, so that's like a high speed. VE is high speed. LE is is low speed. That that makes sense. Okay, not, okay, there we go. And I have, have a yellow light telling me that I believe I'm out of flare. Okay, let me expend. Okay, there we go. That was all the flare from the right side. Yellow light, I think, is an advisory when I'm down to a certain point. And then the second yellow light is telling me that I'm completely out. So I'm actually coming up on getting uh, relatively close to Mercury. And I have a range 65 up here 
uh, just to the right. I'm just going to sort of duck up there real quick once I get heads out of the, my head out of the cockpit. Yeah, I'll just sort of I'll just sort of leave that as is and leave it on with the left dispenser selected in case I want to play around with it again later on. But um, yeah, just to conserve, I'll go back to the single player setting. But yeah, I'll make the right turn up to range 65 here in a bit as I have Mercury, the sort of Nevada test site, Mercury base camp right there, and then I think this tower is the NDB. In fact, I'm showing yeah, I'm just sort of to the left of it. On my heading right now, the needle is pointing off slightly to the right. That is the, I bet that's the NDB tower right there. Okay, so let me just sort of turn towards it. And as I'm heading straight at it, let me try to see if I can figure out this autopilot system with the with the two different settings right here. So I have altitude and speed mode. Yeah, let me read up on this and I'll be right back as I'm overhead, I think, the NDB. Okay, so first mode, altitude mode, I switch it to the alt position, and the autopilot will maintain the current altitude, and then collective inputs are going to cause the the stability augmentation system, or the autopilot, to pitch the aircraft up or down to maintain my current altitude. So that means that that's going to also affect the speed, and as the speed decreases below 120 kilometers per hour, the autopilot won't maintain altitude anymore, and I'll get a warning as I'm yeah, approaching the NDB. Well, let me, let me go ahead and try this. Let's go for altitude. Okay, aircraft pitched up. And, yeah, vertical velocity is stable. Let me... Now, okay, it's going to control pitch of the... Okay, let me... I think I'll be able to go down on the collective. Yeah, there we go. As I go down on the collective, the vertical velocity remains the same, except the aircraft is pitching up. Now, let me get it below 120 kilometers per hour. Okay, there we go. It kicks off. Now, yeah, that do, that did disengage, I think, the hold mode. Yeah, now I have collective control for... Okay, above 120 and it kicked back in automatically. Okay, that's very cool. Now I'm continuing to go up on the collective. The aircraft is now pitching down. As I'm overhead the NDB, let me, let me watch the needle. Yeah, the needle's just sort of swinging over. Right now, okay, yeah, so that is the NDB, and there we go. That's that's good function of the of the uh, ADF system. Okay, still coming up on the collective, and the speed is increasing, and I'm all the way up to my torque limit. And yeah, speeds up through about 150, 60, 170 or so kilometers per hour, doing that until I hit the limit of my torque. Okay, yeah, very very cool. Okay, now. As a, an operational check of the autopilot button that I have mapped on my stick, let me disengage it. Actually, let me sort of be ready for anything to happen right here. Okay, now I'm, I've got both hands on a stick and a stick and collective. Let me disengage. Okay, that disengaged. The needles came. I'll scale low, but I'm sort of. Huh. Okay, let me let me disengage it with the main stick with the main switch PA. And nothing's really changing. Okay, so uh, that that was that was kind of an odd sequence right there. So I disengaged with the stick, nothing happened. I disengaged with the main switch, nothing happened. And it was only when I went to the off position on this switch that it disengaged. And I would imagine that that is, you know, 99 times out of 100, uh, if something just seems odd in the aircraft, it's actually correct. Because I don't claim to know more than developers who have spent years and years to model this aircraft, but this is one of those cases where, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, that wasn't supposed to work that way. I'll go back on on the main switch, uh, main autopilot switch, autopilot re-engages, but I'm not in the altitude hold mode since I had the switch off. Okay, I've got that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that sequence was a little bit, a little bit off, but. I, I could be wrong. I could That could be exactly the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so let me come up here to... I'll just sort of overapply Mercury as I uh, try to figure out the speed uh, function of the autopilot. So let me let it settle in right there. Okay, let me go ahead and level myself off down on the collective. Decrease the torque. And yeah, there we go. Leveled off. Okay, so let's go for speed hold. So what should happen here is when I engage it in speed, now it's going to... 
okay, now I'm going to have collective control. It's going to automatically maintain the speed, but I will have to control altitude with my collective. This boy, this stuff is sort of sort of strange to get my head around. But okay, I've 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 got that. It's just going to maintain the speed, and then I use the collective to maintain a climb or descent. So this, thinking of where this could be useful for like an approach, if I were setting up on a landing approach, then I would just be able to not worry about maintaining a speed, or like pitching the aircraft up or down. I would just maintain a desired a vertical velocity on the initial approach, because I think it does say, and I'll, let me read the checklist up and I'll read through the the descent here. Now, descent may be accomplished any pitch value up to the first D10, etc., etc. Let me see here. Final approach. Uh, just uh, let me see where am I where am I looking for you yeah there it is final approach must be made headed to the wind at low rate of descent and recommended speed of 120 so I just engage that at 120 and then I use the collective for the for the vertical descent and yeah this is just a, a, a good means to a navigate using a constant speed just using the collective to maintain your desired climb or descent rate or current altitude and then also for an approach. Yeah, that's very useful. Okay, let me disengage that. Now let me uh, do my operational check here of disengaging using the stick. So let me disengage. Okay, this one I think actually did kick off that time. Something did change with the pitch of the aircraft. Now let me re-engage using the stick. Hmm. Okay, well, I can I can tell additionally that it's engaged because right now I'm trying to cycle the uh, cyclic fore and aft, but it's yeah it's not letting me do anything other than left and right cyclic controls. Now let me toggle that off. Okay, yeah, I just don't think that the stick toggle is doing anything right there. Let me try master switch. Yeah, still the same thing. Now let me go back to the off position. Now I have positive control. Well, I could see myself getting into trouble right there. Not, okay, I just got to remember for now at least to, if I want to disengage it, I have to do it via the main toggle switch right here. Because, yeah, especially with that mode, and I'll re-engage it in speed mode. Yeah, right now, yeah, I just ha I have no authority over pitch of the aircraft, so that could get me into some trouble right there. Okay, let me go back to off, so I'm back into the, just the basic stability augmentation set up right now with the switch on and the system engaged, and it's just providing me with stabilization. Okay, so, okay, here we are at Mercury. Let me just uh, take it over the, over the top here. We'll go out there and have a look around Frenchman Flats real quick, and I'll come up with something to go over once I get there. I'll be right back. Okay, and coming through the pass, out over the road, and into the Frenchman Flats, the old nuclear detonation site, original nuclear detonation site. There are some craters right here, and then if we go further north up into the Yucca Flats, that's where the testing really got into full swing out here at the Nevada test site. So I was going to look for the fuel state. I was expecting, okay, let me go up before I fly it into the ground. That was almost... That was almost bad. Okay, let me go ahead and just level up here. In fact, let me go ahead and engage it in altitude hold. That kind of stuck up on me. Uh, it's easy to just get a sync rate going, and I was trying to uh, correct with a little bit of collect. Okay, let me disengage it real quick and just see. Okay, so I just sort of explore the handling here. Okay, let me go up on collective. Yeah, that's what I thought was happening there. Collective isn't really doing a whole heck of a lot to help me out right there like like it would in I think Black Shark it would be more pronounced where you can just really save yourself by going up on the collective you really don't get like an instantaneous response out of the collective so I think if I find myself with the ground sink and just ground rush coming up like that I think just stick forces back is going to be the appropriate just sort of first response or a com combination of stick forces and Collective. Okay, let me re-engage it in altitude hold real quick. And I'll pull back on the collective to have it increase my speed. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, getting back to the fuel, 
I was looking for, okay, 347. I think when I engaged, in fact, my auxiliary tank, the needle was actually down below a little bit, 347. It's just sort of held in there right at 347, just a touch below the 350 tick. And it's been there for, I don't know, about 5, 10 minutes or so. So that I can tell that the auxiliary tank is, in fact, feeding. And it should be fairly soon that this light comes on, the R sub light comes on, and I can then disengage the auxiliary tank switch. So I will be on the lookout for that. 